Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing all the PA jobs that I had, including all the roles of the PA and everything that I did in my work. Every PA's position is going to be different based on what hospital and practice they work for. So this is my experience. It is about 8.30 in the morning. I just finished cooking dinner. I know, in the morning because I'm meal prepping right before I go to work. See me sipping on my... Uh, iced coffee with some oat milk. This is my new summer favorite. Other than that, let's get into this video. So before I get into my first job as a PA, just want to kind of give you guys a background. At my PA school, we were able to choose an elective rotation. For myself specifically, I chose dermatology just because I knew that I wanted to get into dermatology as a new grad. So I figured this was a great lead way into the field and a great exposure as a PA student. When I graduated, I began to interview for some jobs. I kind of became a little bit more aggressive with job searching after I passed my boards. It was a little bit easier to just be like, hey, I'm ready for it certified. The first two jobs that I was offered and considering was one in dermatology, this was strictly medical derm, and then two in neurosurgery. I know two very, very, very different fields of medicine. I ended up going with dermatology just because every job that I was looking required about three to five years of PA experience and this practice was willing to train a new grad. So I figured this was my opportunity and I was gonna take the plunge. So my first job out of PA school was in a medical dermatology practice office. It was based in Queens and in Brooklyn. So I was commuting into Brooklyn a couple of times a week as well as I was living in Queens so it was easy for me to commute to the Queens location. This was strictly a medical dermatology practice. For the first six months, that was the training period. If you recall on some videos that I did with Michael, I always say sometimes you're gonna have to have a training period, especially as a new grad. So yes, I did a six month training period and yes, I took a pay cut. For me, this is a specialty that I really wanted to get into. And I knew that this was a great opportunity because someone was willing to train a new grad. So what did I do on a daily basis? So schedule wise, I worked Monday through Thursday and every Sunday. So yes, weekends were included. My weekend on Sunday was from eight to 12. This was a very busy practice. There was actually one patient booked every 15 minutes, really, really quick visits, one doc and three PAs, all patients ranging from pediatrics to adults. The procedures that I did included intralesional injections, biopsies, shape biopsies, punch biopsies, lasers for psoriasis. These were a couple of the little procedures that I did in the office. I did see my own patients. I also saw patients with my supervising physician. It was an awesome experience. I learned so much. I saw so many various skin conditions. If you do get a job offer in the specialty that you want straight out of school, take it even if it requires a pay cut, even if it requires some form of travel, even if it requires not the ideal schedule. This is a great way to learn and it's great to get that experience. So after about a year of doing derm, I was in that kind of gray area where a lot of my friends were working in the ER or in the hospital. So at that point, I was just like, hmm, do I want to go in the hospital and get some hospital PA experience? I figured this was going to be my time to do it pretty fresh out of school to have all that medicine still very, very fresh for me. And I ended up taking a full-time general surgery position in New York City, and I switched to part-time dermatology. So how did I do that? Three days a week. It was three 12 hour days at the hospital. And I did every Sunday still. And then I did every Tuesday. I always worked Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at the hospital. I did Tuesday at the germ office, Sunday at the germ office. Monday was my day off. And then Saturdays, sometimes I would pick up overtime shifts at the hospital. When you're young, you work as much as you can to one, save money, make money, pay off any loans, and just start saving. Going to school for X and Y years, you are excited to finally start making money. Let's get into what I did on my surgery job. So every surgery job is going to be different. Yours may not look like this specifically. This is what I did. I worked in a community hospital, but we did have residents. Three different teams. I was part of the ACS team, which is the acute care surgery team. What does that mean? It means that one, any patient that comes into the ER not assigned to a specific attending comes to 
our service, as well as we had some attendings specifically to the ACS team or Team 4. Shout out to everyone working on Team 4 now. The schedule was 6 a.m. to about 6.37. You would get in, you would get the sign out from the night team. After that, they would fill you in on all the events of the patient that happened overnight. Then you would round with your team. So you would go to each patient, kind of give a brief history, as well as any overnight events see the patient, see how they're feeling. That was really important was the morning round just because at that point, after we rounded, we went back to our workroom. The chiefs were calling all the attendings, filling them in on their patients. I would be eating breakfast while going through all the labs, seeing if all the labs from the morning came back. So we would write all our notes, check the labs. Then we would meet up with our chiefs again, go over all the plans for the patient. If the patient has chest pain and the nurse is busy and it's your patient, guess who's doing the EKG? You are. If the patient needs new labs like prior to surgery and the phlebotomy team didn't come that morning and they need it now, guess who's doing labs? I was managing all the patients on the floor. If I was with a resident, we would both do it together. Sometimes if there was extra PAs or extra coverage, we would rotate into the OR. We would also rotate holding the consult patron, seeing all the new ER consults down there and either admitting them onto our service or onto different services. So that's essentially the role that I did as a surgery PI. You know, sometimes the nurse will call you at 5.55, right before sign up, that a patient spiked a fever. So yeah, sometimes you won't get out at 6, 6.30. Those are your patients. You are responsible for that. I feel like surgery is an awesome field. You see so much, but you also have the surgical aspect of it. So it's really awesome. I learned so much. I loved where I work. We all got along really well. Since these are your patients and you're taking care of them during the day, maybe you're rounding with your attending and they're like, okay, you could advance the diet and the patient needs to leave before dinner time. So how are they going to get their new diet? I will never forget my first day. I went down to the kitchen and got them a meal. I'll link the photo here. There's a photo with a Mexican student, myself, a first year resident who is now an attending physician. I'm just going to cover their faces, obviously, for privacy reasons. While I was working as a surgery PA, I ended up accepting a position with another derm practice. So this derm practice was cosmetic and medical dermatology. So I did all the medical stuff, but now I got some cosmetic exposure more with like chemical peels, lasers, injectables with like a medical and cosmetic derm practice. It's awesome because you can kind of convert some of your medical patients into cosmetic patients. And that was kind of my goal for some of my patients who are interested in that. All right, taking a break for a little coffee break. Okay. As a PA, you always have to be a team player. That's really important. Once you start building your own patient following and you have X amount of patients booked for your day, that's when you you know start getting a medical assistance. So yes, in the beginning, I would call back my own patients. I would write my own notes. I would clean the rooms. You do the roles of not just being a provider, but other things as well. And that just comes with the experience as well as with the following. In this practice, I did all the same medical dermatology. We just now added some cosmetic procedures there. I worked with a few PAs and physicians, but also the company itself had tons and tons of PAs, nurse practitioners, physicians. So it was really an awesome place to grow as well as to learn from other colleagues. Now, during this time, after I switched my germ practices, I still did my three 12 hour surgery days. And then I did my two germ days, which were Mondays and Saturdays. After that, we ended up moving to North Carolina because of Michael's residency. I was looking for a job in either surgery or dermatology at the time since those were my comforts. I did get offered a surgery job. Um, it was kind of hard to find a germ job down there. So I was looking at other specialties as well. I knew I really wanted to stay in a field of medicine or specialty where I was going to be an autonomous provider. I was actually looking into urgent care as well. I felt like I still wanted to do something with procedures. I love doing procedures and hands-on stuff. So I ended up interviewing in urgent care and that's what I was doing while I was in North Carolina as well. There, I was a solo provider. I saw anything that came in through the doors, um, whether it was chest pain, colds, flu, um, COVID, abdominal pain, STD testing, anything. All body systems from head to toe, literally. The schedule there was three 12 hour days or longer. Someone, you know, usually I worked eight to eight, but if someone came in at 7.59, 
you saw that patient. We did work weekends as well. So at that point I was working, one week would be three 12s, the other week would be two 12s and then two eight hour shifts, which were both weekends. So it was every other weekend you would work for the full weekend. It's also really flexible there. You can pick up a ton of overtime shifts if you want, or you can work your minimum, whatever you want. Urgent care is a great, great field of medicine for PAs. You learn a ton, you do a ton. I really became such a competent and confident provider. I did that for about four years. After that, I switched gears and that's when I became a full-time aesthetic provider. So I knew at some point in my career I wanted to go back to either derm or plastic surgery or solely aesthetics and I had the opportunity and I took it. I currently love, love, love my job. I love my team. I love the environment. I love being an aesthetic PA. I love doing cosmetic treatments. I think I really found my field of medicine that I enjoy and that suits me. I do not regret any of the jobs that I took. All of my jobs really kind of molded me into the provider that I am today. I have to say, if you love one specialty, then sure, take that job. But if you're kind of like me, where you knew you wanted to do something long-term, but you kind of wanted to see other things, then do whatever makes you happy. Each job will teach you something and every job will have its pros and cons, whether it be just scheduling or pay or people that you work with, whatever the case may be. But I have to say, I cannot complain about any of my jobs. They were all awesome. So for me, it took me eight years to land my dream job. And here I am today, or I should say seven. I love being a PA. I loved all my jobs and that's really it. So if you have any questions specifically with each job, let me know. This video could go on for hours, but I kind of just wanted to give you a broad spectrum or broad overview, I should say, of what each job entailed. I feel like I need to find like a new place to film videos, but I guess that's what vlogs are for and tutorials. Maybe I'll do that on my next video. This is another PA video. It was requested. So I figured I'd do it. Subscribe to this channel, like and follow me on Instagram and like this video, of course. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Other than that, I will see you all on my next video. Bye.